Okay, good evening councillors, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cabinet this evening, the 21st of July. So we start with apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Alex Farrell and Councillor Marie Bailey, who are both on separate holidays, uh, and I believe everyone else is present. Uh, so item two on the agenda is the minutes of the last meeting. Is it your wish I sign those as your record? That's proposed by Councillor Pritchard, seconded by Councillor Summers. All those in favour? Okay, consider those signed. Thank you. Item three is declarations of interest. Does anybody have any interest to declare? No. Excellent. In that case, we'll move straight on to uh, agenda item number four, which is question time. Uh, apologies, I've neglected to open this section. Okay, so this evening we have uh, two questions uh, submitted to the Cabinet. Uh, one is from a Mr M Hall, who is not able to attend this evening uh, and has uh, expressed that he won't be attending. So we will take that question as read and the answer will be included in the minutes and also sent to Mr Hall uh, to, to respond to, to his question. Uh, the second question uh, is from Mr Bob Bilcliffe. Uh, so, he's already there at the table, poised, so over to you, Mr Bilcliffe. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'd like to ask the Leader of the Council to give Tamworth residents assurances that he has undertaken due diligence regarding any health impacts from the 5G network rollout in Tamworth. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr Bilcliffe. Uh, 5G is a fifth generation technology standard for broadband mobile phone networks, uh, which mobile phone companies began deploying worldwide in 2019, uh, and is the planned successor to, to the 4G network uh, to provide connectivity to most current mobile phones. Under the general permitted development order, when considering applications relating to 5G rollout, for example, masts, cabinets, etc., there are stringent requirements for consideration. The health implications are not a consideration for either the planning process or Tamworth Borough Council. Do you have a supplementary, Mr Bilcliffe? Yes, thank you, Chair. The European Parliament, in, not, in June 2021, published a review titled Health Impact of 5G. They called for a halt of the expansion of 5G which should be clear which should be a clear warning for policymakers to put the brakes on indeed one world one of the world's leading reassurance providers the swiss regroup has rated 5g as a high impact liability risk can you please assure residents that tamworth borough council's public liability insurance provides cover for adverse health effects caused by 5g Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Belcliff. Uh, in terms of the, the specific element of your question at the end, I don't have access to the public liability documents in front of me, so I can't tell you what is or what isn't covered uh, within those. Uh, in terms of the broader uh, areas covered with your, with your supplementary question, and, uh, and policymakers, Tamworth Borough Council is not a policymaker in relation to the rollout of. 5G communications. So as a result, we aren't involved in the halting of the progression of the rollout or any opportunity to set any policy in accordance with that. So it would be inappropriate for this authority uh, to, to suggest anything e either way on that. I'm happy though to have a conversation with you at a later date, uh, not necessarily this evening, uh, to look at how we could respond to the information you've just given me and look at possible opportunities of of addressing your concerns and also addressing the the matter at hand so if um if you want to drop me an email we'll meet up and we'll we'll have a further discussion if that's okay mr Dulcliffe. thank you chair it's perfectly acceptable thank you thank you very much okay so that concludes the public question time there were only the two questions so we'll now move on to Agenda item number five, uh, which are matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals. Uh, I'm not aware of any this evening. 
No, there are none. So we'll move on to agenda item number six, which is quarter four performance report. There's nothing better than re producing quarter, last year's end of year performance report by the end of July, the following municipal year, but we'll go for it anyway. Um, the report in front of us, ladies and gentlemen, covers a number of issues, a number of projects of Tamworthborough Council, including future high street funds. Uh, it is slightly out of date now, and progress has been made since the report was written, uh, but it gives you a, a full flavour as to some of the challenges and the direction of the future high street fund. Uh, traditionally, the performance report covers the items that were raised by corporate scrutiny. Uh, they continue to feature in there, such as the impact of benefit reform and the continued rollout of universal credits. This was discussed at scrutiny a few weeks ago, uh, and there were no further recommendations on that particular item. Uh, a number of uh, other items were picked up in terms of impact on housing rent arrears and the cost of living. Uh, and from the data that's shown at the end of last quarter, there had been no significant impact either way uh, in, the, in the performance of, of those two elements. Uh, so the report is in front of you, uh, Cabinet members. Uh, I move it as a historic re report of performance for quarter four last year. Uh, happy to have a seconder or take any questions. Second. Councillor Pritchard seconds. Any further comments? In that case, all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Brings me on to agenda item number seven, which is the capital outturn report. Uh, Councillor Bailey has submitted her apologies this evening. Uh, and as Councillor Pritchard was the former portfolio holder uh, for finance, I'm going to ask him to fill in. Uh, so, Councillor Pritchard, could you give us the capital outturn report? Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the report is to advise uh, members of the final outturn of the authority's uh, capital programme. Um, if, if members go to the, uh, into the detail of the report, they can see the various amounts that are uh, uh, detailed. I mean, large amounts, for example, are the uh, high street uh, fund regeneration. So um, it, it's money that we're carrying over to, so we can continue to deliver projects. I'm happy to take any questions on this, any specifics, but it is largely a housekeeping report. Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Do we have any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, as Councillor Pritchard suggested, it is a housekeeping report and it's uh, about reprofiling the, the, capital, the capital expenditure that was planned for last year. And as you've said, the biggest element is the future high street fund. As we continue to roll that out, uh, there will be things moving at different paces uh, throughout the project, so that's not to, be, uh, not to be unexpected. You have moved the report. I'm happy to second. All those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous. That is carried as well. Thank you very much. Uh, and once again, over to Councillor Pritchard for agenda item eight, which is the write-offs. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Again, largely a financial housekeeping report. So this report details the amounts um, written off by the authority, and there's a full breakdown uh, on the various uh, areas that include, so council tax, business race, sundry income, uh, and housing uh, benefit and housing. Um, all effort is made to recover money owes to the money owed to the authority um, from various sources, uh, but often a lot is uneconomical to pursue. It might be the result of bankruptcy or or, or death. Um, so it's prudent to write off these amounts um, for accounting purposes to assume we won't get them. And actually, should we get them back in the future, uh, that's a that's a benefit to the authority. Uh, but all effort is made to recover monies where possible. But Often it is not possible. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Any questions or comments from Cabinet? No? Okay, I uh, just wanted to reinforce what you've just said there, Councillor Pritchard. We, we are actually quite good at clawing back debts uh, to, to the authority, uh, and this is an accountancy exercise of writing, them, uh, writing off the outstanding ones. However, if we get the slightest sniff, we will continue to pursue them. Uh, how to the best of our ability to get that cash back. Uh, they may be written off for accountancy-wise, but they're never forgotten. Uh, so you've moved it. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Dawes seconds. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, no offence to Councillor Pritchard or Councillor Bailey, but this next item is a little bit exciting. Uh, so I will hand over to uh, Councillor Steve Doyle for the UK Shared Prosperity Fund. Thank you, Mr Chairman. First, I'd like to thank Matt Fletcher for this report. The purpose of this report is to update Cabinet on the UK Shared Property Fund and the approach recommended for Council to submit an investment plan and develop a process for awarding funding for agreed interventions. 
In summary, the Shared Prosperity Fund is a part of a wider levelling up agenda that has been widely, promote, widely promoted by central government and aims to deliver significant support for all areas of the UK. It seeks to invest in domestic priorities and targeting funding where it is most needed. The primary focus of the fund is on the following high level objectives. Build, building up pride in a place, supporting the development of high quality skills training, also supporting improved pay, employment and productivity growth opportunities and increased improved life chances. Further details on these objectives can be found within the report. See Appendix 3 and 4. This will give us the flexibility to invest across a range of activities that represent the right solutions for Tamworth. This will allow us to focus on strengthening our social fabric and fostering a sense of local pride and belonging through investment in activities that enhance physical, cultural and social ties and amenities such as community infrastructure and local green space and community-led projects enabling us to build resilient, safe and healthy neighbourhoods through investment in quality places that people will want to work, live, play and learn in, through targeted improvements to the uh, built-up environment and innovative approaches to crime prevention. The fund is defined in government terms as a structural fund, therefore it is seen as a replacement for the European Structural Investment Funds. Details are contained in Appendix 1 for the Government Perspective, giving in-depth detail about the Shared Prosperity Fund. Tamworth Borough Council has been de defined as a lead authority and will be directly accountable for setting up the fund framework. This will involve commissioning and awarding projects, ensuring programme delivery, ensuring spend is on target and con uh, conducted monitoring and evaluation of the whole programme. The Council will receive a direct allocation of over £2 million to run the programme over three financial years starting from April 2022 up until the end of March 2025. Within the report is the resource implications section which provides a detailed account of the financial information which Matt will cover. The fund is primarily a revenue uh, fund with a limited ability to spend capital. To secure these funds, the Council must produce a high-level investment plan to be submitted by the 1st of August. This must be signed off by the Chief Executive, the Section 151 Officer and the Leader of the Council. A template of the investment plan can be found in Appendix 2, with other information in the options considered in the section. Are we finished? The Council will be notified in October 2022 if the submitted investment plan has been approved and can commence spend. The Council must allocate funding both in collaboration and partnership with key stakeholders and manage this through a local partnership group. This means that the Council cannot make decisions in isolation or based solely on its own needs. It also means that the Council-based projects interventions must be submitted to the local partnership group and are not guaranteed to be successful. In terms of resource, the Council will be given a fixed amount of around £20,000 to contribute to the development of the bid. This will only be paid to the Council when it receives its first fund allocation in October. As such, the Council is using existing budgets to fund development up until this point. On this development funding, 10000 has already been committed to support and evidence-based highlighting what the local challenges and opportunities that the fund project... Pro sorry. Of this development funding, £10,000 has already been committed to support an evidence-based highlighting what the local challenges and opportunities are that the funded projects and interve interventions will seek to address. This is a critical piece of work as without a baseline position, the Council cannot justify its rationale for funding and successfully complete the investment plan by the submission date. This has been procured through an existing contractual agreement with Aspiral Verde using agreed economic data experts. Any underspending on the 20,000 development funding will be used to support additional administration duties and staffing costs during delivery. To deliver the funds priorities as set out by the government, the council has been allocated the two million to spend over the next three financial years. 4% of the total amounts allocated to Tamworth or in cash terms, around about £93,000 can be used specifically to, for administration duties and a breakdown of these can be found in Appendix 5. The areas covered by administration are project 
assessment, contracting, monitoring and evaluation, and ongoing stakeholder engagement. Further details, details on roles and responsibilities will be developed by the, uh, September. While these decisions are being made, the project will be supported from officers across the wider economic development and regeneration team and community and partnership, de uh, partnership teams. Other officers, dependent on their skill set, may also be included and asked to support, including the dire asset director for partnerships. So, my recommendations to Cabinet are the following, and I have it noted that I changed these from the original report. Um, these actually make uh, better reading, is probably the best way to put it. Item 1, Cabinet approves the outline approach to delivering shared uh, prosperity fund to invest in local priorities, targeting funding where it is most needed, building up pride in Tamworth, supporting the development of high quality skills training, supported improved pay, employment and productivity growth opportunities and increasing improved life chances of the residents of Tamworth. Secondly, Cabinet delegates authority to the Assistant Director for Growth and Regeneration in consultation with the Leader of the Council, the Chief Exec and the Section 151 Officer to submit the investment plan to Central Government by uh, the submission deadline. And finally, item three, that a report be brought back to Cabinet setting out detailed resource requirements, governance, governance including scrutiny, monitoring and evaluation processes and an update on the funding programme by the end of 2022. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, did the officers want to add anything to that? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. There's just one comment to add, um, which is um, on page um, 90 of the pack um, in the paper, there's um, a paragraph in there that says the revenue cash flow profile um, was currently being verified with government. So um, just for the just for the minutes, um, the uh, government has changed the cash flow from um, the figures in that report and I'll issue them. Um, um, for um, to be approved in the minutes, but effectively the 15% allocation goes down um, in the first year to 12. Uh, the 27% allocation goes to um, about 23 and a half, and then the 58% allocation in the final year goes up. So government have um, basically um, given more f more flexibility in the final year around spend, um, and I think the comment to that is um, you know. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dorr, for the very detailed, um, um, the detailed information on the scheme. Um, but governments um, clearly want most of the spend within that last financial year, which gives uh, the council um, and its partners time to develop projects that make the most impact um, on the local communities in which it serves. Um, further to that, the only additional other thing to have since the writing of this, this report. Um, there's been extensive stakeholder engagement um, across a wide range of bodies um, with over 30 different stakeholder groups that represent much wider groups um, consulted on as well to ensure that this is really something for the community and um, makes the most impact on outcomes and outputs as required by the fund. The devil is in the detail and we're awaiting more detail from government on um, certain matters such as monitoring and evaluation, but we hope to have that very shortly by the end of the summer. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Uh, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Chair. Um, Matt, can you just give us um, an idea of perhaps some examples, excuse my naivety, but what you think might make good projects? Yes, yeah, so that's a very good question. So um, those that have um, looked at the prospectus, there's um, 41 different interventions across three pillars. So community in place, supporting local business and people and skills. Um, so the diversity even within community in place is huge. So there's a focus on um, town centres and high streets. There's a focus on community and capacity and engagement with um, voluntary groups. So, for example, um, we, we all know that um, different community groups have been hit hard 
um, over the last few years um, with COVID. Um, and there's an opportunity there to perhaps, you know, a project could be looking at civic engagement across all sorts of voluntary groups from heritage groups to community groups, even to business groups. Um, you know, I think obviously I have a focus on business and regeneration, but, you know, we, we tried a few years ago to get a, a, a bid, a business improvement district up, um, you know, and, and there isn't um, a very clear sort of voluntary group around businesses, for example, there could be further work to capacity of voluntary organisations, um, heritage groups. Um, another example um, is around tourism, um, something that stands out in this particular um, fund is the focus on heritage and tourism. There could be a very specific project about Tamworth increasing its um, image, reputation, reach as a place, uh, as a visitor and tourism destination. Likewise then, um, some of the work, um, the, the, the focus of a lot of activities around the town centre, there could be business support schemes around the town centre, businesses, even specific sectors and likewise around skills you know um, particular projects could be around um, there's, a, there's a focus on basic skills so life skills that could be um, digital access for people who um, you know are currently perhaps um, unable to access digital systems and we know generally in the world nowadays most things are accessed by some form of electronic form or app so I think um, you know I think what will be really interesting with this is to see the creativity and innovation that can come forward that people that perhaps put projects forward. But there's a real scope in this, an opportunity to do different things as well as perhaps some of the things we're more used to seeing. Can I just Thank you. on the back of that? Uh, else Sorry. I was if, about to call you, yeah. If you look at app uh, Appendix 4, it's all in there in terms of objectives, outcomes, so yeah. if you have a look at that, that will give you an insight into what's capable. Okay, thank you. Um, also pick up on that. Uh, you'll remember the council decided to support a change in its vision back in February this year uh, and aligned the current MTFS to that vision. Also, where there were gaps in the resourcing of that vision, if you look at those and compare them with the uh, interventions, objectives, and outcomes that Councillor Doyle has just referred to, you'll find they fill a number of the gaps uh, in terms of revenue support uh, f for our vision. Uh, we've got a number of big projects going on at the moment with Future High Street Fund. We've put a bid in for the Leveling Up Fund, etc. These are big capital pots of money. This is a revenue pot of money. So it's it's not about buildings. It's about the delivery of. So so the report that Steve's brought to us uh, this evening is a, is about other opportunities to deliver the vision uh, that we set for, for the town and it's uh, it's no coincidence uh, that a large part of that vision aligns with the uh, with the pillars that are in this uh, in the shares prosperity fund uh, and this said councillor apologies mr barrett uh, th thank you chair i think it's it's also really important to hone in on the the, the skills element to this this is something that has been sort of avoided by by many bodies nobody really takes the the overall responsibility for it um, and indeed this doesn't give us responsibility but it does give us some funding to um, facilitate and enable the development of skills across our area um, and that is a really important thing it's it's, it's the piece of the jigsaw that's missing um, if we can match businesses with colleges and schools to get the right qualifications coming out in the first place it gives you know us a really strong workforce with a with a ready-made market so i think that let's not underestimate how how important this is i think it's a uh, it, it could be a game changer for us albeit that's in year three um because the, the the prospectus is quite clear in when we can deliver these things but i think the, the skills part of this is, is actually quite quite well, it's all quite exciting but particularly the skills is an area of um perhaps untapped potential that um we, we've now got some uh, funding to do something with Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you. I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's the first time we've had a direct influence on the skills agenda. Uh, hence, Councillor Doyle's portfolio is skills, planning, economy and waste. So it's, uh, it's all on your shoulders, Steve, when it comes to skills. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there any further questions or comments on the Shared Prosperity Fund? Second. Uh, Councillor Prashad has seconded it because 
You did, you did propose it, didn't you? Yes. yes did. So it is moved and seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. And I believe that is the end of the business for this evening. So I will close the meeting at 6.25. And thank you all for coming and participating. Thank you very much. Good night.